None of us want to work forever, so let's answer the question. How much should you contribute to your pension? Pensions. Not the sexiest topic, but hey, I can only play the hand that I'm dealt. They might not be the sexiest, but they are a damn useful investment tool, and one that I think people have a lot of misconceptions about. So firstly, what is a pension scheme? In simple terms, a pension is just a type of investment plan that will help you save for later life. But unlike other types of savings and investments, they do get a rather favourable tax treatment. The biggest available tax win for you comes in the form of tax relief on your contributions, and essentially what that means is some money that would have gone to the government in tax goes into your pension pot instead, and I'll show you a little later exactly how that works. If you're employed, you might be a member of your employer pension scheme, and the benefit of that is that you will be getting money from your company to help you plan for your retirement. Or, if you're a lone ranger like me, <laughs> then it's down to you, kid. However, they are still a very useful tool for your retirement toolkit. But how much should you be contributing to a pension scheme? Well, to give a big question a small answer, as much as you can afford to, as early as you are able to. Money saving experts suggest that you should take your age at which you start your pension planning and halve it. Then, use that number as a percentage of your gross salary to contribute into your pension each year. So, for example, if you're 32 years old and starting your pension today, you should look to have 16% of your gross earnings going into a pension to start you off. Clearly, by this logic, the later that you start, you've got some serious catching up to do, and boy does it make a difference, which I'll show you later on. But let's look at that example. How many 32-year-olds are actually contributing 16% into their pension? Well, if the average gross salary for someone around that age is 34,000, then that equates to 453 pounds a month, approximately. But if that person is employed, don't forget that the employer will probably be bearing some of the brunt of this contribution. So let's say that the employer is doing 4%, which would be about £113 a month. That leaves you £340 a month based on that maths. But don't forget, the tax man is here to help with tax relief. So the tax relief on a gross contribution of £340, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, as we are in this example, is £68. So all in all, all you you need to find is £272 in this example. Not so bad, eh? Now I've seen a hundred different rules of thumb over the years to try and answer this question, and that is all that they are, just a rule of thumb. Why do they call it that, rule of thumb? Where does the phrase rule of thumb come from? The rule of thumb is said to be derived from English law, where a man was able to beat his wife with a stick as long as it wasn't thicker than his thumb. I did not expect that. <laughs> oh wow, that got dark. You may have also heard about multiplying your desired retirement income by 25, the times 25 rule, and you may have heard figures thrown about like a 4% withdrawal rate. Interestingly, Fidelity, a pretty large pension and investment provider, have this graphic on their website. It suggests that when you are age 30, you should aim to save one times your annual household income before tax, then by 40, two times, 54 times, 66 times, and then by 68, seven times. So yeah, there's another rule of thumb. Although, now I know what that phrase means, I think I might stop using it. To be honest with you, it really comes down to two factors. When you want to retire, and how much you'll be spending. Put your thumbs away, Tom. <laughs> A much better way to view this, in my opinion, is not with some arbitrary rule like take the number of pets you've got and multiply by the square meterage of your garden or whatever it might be, but instead find out what your golden number is and work backwards. Let me explain. When it comes to retirement, it's a numbers game. I actually did a more detailed video on this, which I'll link to here. If you know you want to retire at age 60 and you know you want £40,000 a year to do that, then you can work out with those bits of information what size pot you'll need. And once you know what size pot you'll need, you can work backwards to see where you're at today 
and what you're likely to need to contribute from now until then in order to get you there. By using a sensible rate of return and a decent compound interest calculation, we can work out what your monthly contribution needs to be. Now these calculations are always full of assumptions and in truth are always wrong. But in my opinion, if you do that maths and then check in on it every single year, you're very likely to achieve your goal. Quite simply, you need to seriously ask yourself the question, do you want to work forever or not? And can you make that a priority in your life? Many people feel that they cannot make the sacrifice from their monthly paycheck right now in order to plan for the future. But it's not about sacrifices and you shouldn't see it that way. It's about priorities. And when people say to me, well, I might not make it to retirement, I might get run over by a bus tomorrow, Firstly, why is it always a bus when people say that example? But secondly, that argument just does not hold up. Because if you're age 30, you're far more likely statistically to reach a grand old retirement age than not. So why not plan for it? And you're certainly more likely to do that than get run over by a bus. Exactly how many people do we know that have been squashed by a bus? So I want to come back to the small answer I gave to the big question at the start of this video, which was as much as you can afford to, as early as you're able to. In my opinion, the most important part of that answer is actually the second part, as early as you're able to. It's like they say, the best time to invest was yesterday, the second best time is today. If you're contemplating starting to invest and plan for later life now no matter how young or old you might be then do it right now well hang on carry on watching the end of this video first don't worry there's not that much longer to go but you really need to do it now and hopefully this example will show you why there's a million examples like this all over the internet but just take a look at this graph from the investment giants JP Morgan Susan invests 5,000 every year between ages 25 and 35 so a total of 50,000 over 10 years at age 65 she ends up with 600,000 there or thereabouts Bill also invests 5,000 each year, but he actually starts 10 years later than Susan at age 35. But he does invest for a lot longer, three times longer in fact, for 30 years, all the way up to age 65. So he's put in three times as much as Susan with 150,000 going in the pot, but he actually ends up with less overall, only around 540,000 starting 10 years later has seriously cost him. But the real winner here is Chris. Chris invests 5,000 every year all the way through from 25 to 65. So in total, he invests 200,000. But because he started early and kept on going, he ends up with a whopping 1.14 million at age 65. So there you go. Be like Chris, get your pension started today. Off you pop. Bye.